So for this project, I've gone from this LED display to this single LED touch button, and now this, a full LED capacitive touch Bluetooth keypad that uses 3D printed translucent light pipes with an embedded capacitive touchpad. I've been posting updates for this project as short form videos, but I thought now's the time to put it all together into one long video. It all started with playing around with translucent filament as a part of a multi-material print. I was embedding LED light pipes into the lid of an enclosure and using addressable LEDs to create an embedded display. This gave a really cool and clean looking result. Viewers were interested if we could make this interactive with the use of capacitive touch sensors. So I went on to experiment to see how we could do this. I wanted the touch sensor and the addressable LED to be in line so it looked like you were actually touching the character, not just around it when you interacted. For this prototype, I just used these single LED breakouts that were really cheap, only about 20 cents, and these would sit behind the touch sensor and shine light through the hole in the middle. My initial design for this was to sort of embed everything into the print so it was one fully enclosed unit. I'd pause the print at two locations, first for the touch sensor and then for the LED once I'd soldered everything together. I thought the end result for this was really cool and clean and it worked well. There were some concerned from viewers that it might not be the most fixable design and you'd have to crack it open if you wanted to replace something. There are some existing products from Adafruit that do a similar thing. They have them in both momentary and toggleable versions, and they use this reverse mounted LED, which is pretty interesting, but they've put it offset from the actual touch sensor. So that suggests that maybe it's not possible to put it in line on the same PCB, I'm not sure. But this LED also is not addressable and not actually switchable unless you do a little modification to the board, which honestly isn't too difficult. From this, I did a little bit of research and I was actually able to find an addressable version of these backwards or reverse mounted LED. You can only find them in these very small versions, but it might be interesting to play around with these in the future. In any case, both of these single touchpad PCBs were much too large to fit into a whole keypad. So I got this NPR 121 touch keypad, which has 12 touch keys and modified it again by drilling holes. I still had a bunch of these single addressable LEDs and so I used them in a 3D printed mount, which also makes it easier to arrange them in whatever distance I need. So again, these addressable LEDs would sit behind the touchpad and shine light through the hole, out through the light pipe and illuminate the character. I stacked 12 of these LEDs on the 3D printed mount and soldered them all together in series. Now at this point I know a lot of you are saying why don't you just make a PCB, you might just make a PCB, but for proof of concepts and prototypes like this I pretty much never design a PCB straight away. I always like to verify it by quickly hacking together these cheap components you can get online, verifying that it works and then if I want to go on and make a PCB. If there is considerable interest in going forward with this project and people want to see it done it'll be interesting to see if we can create a PCB with those reverse mounted addressable LEDs and the touch pads all on the same board. And if I do end up doing that, I'll be using my PCB sponsor and sponsor of this video, All PCB, who can supply you with all your PCB manufacturing and PCB assembly needs. They currently have a brand new offer for first customers where you can get $30 off your first order and free global shipping. So you can try out your PCB prototypes for cheap. All you have to do is upload your designs, get a quote and apply the offer and get your boards made quickly. Thanks again to All PCB for sponsoring this video and supporting this project. So back at our project, I'm using the Fire Beetle ESP32 as the microcontroller for this project. Now I know what some of you are saying, ESP32s like the one on the Fire Beetle already have their own capacitive touch inputs, and that's true, the Fire Beetle has six of them broken out, but I was originally going to use the Pi Pico W2 that I already had laying around, and this also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but it turns out if I want to add on a LiPo hat or shim to this Pi Pico, it costs pretty much the same as the Fire Beetle board itself, which also has lithium battery input and charging. As for the battery for this project, I went a little bit overboard. I have these 5 amp hour 21700 cells from previous projects and so I just added on a battery protection circuit and a connector to use this for my project. The 5 amp hours is going to last a really long time as in deep sleep the ESP draws basically micro amps of current. For the actual keypad I wanted something that would sit nicely on the desk and would angle the keypad up towards me. There's still quite a lot of room inside so you could fit extra sensors or some haptic feedback or just make the device smaller. Just like previous versions 
versions. The LED light pipes are embedded into the enclosure as a multi-material print. It might be possible to print them out separately, but they're a bit of an odd shape. So using an AMS or something that allows for multi-material print helps. I'll upload the full step files and Fusion 360 files, so you could potentially modify the design and change the characters, though I haven't really made sure this will work, so uh, no guarantees that it won't just all break when you try it. I prefer the look of the textured build plate. I think it just looks nicer. I went through a few iterations of this to get everything working all right and making sure the light diffuses properly and making sure there was a proper solid first layer so light doesn't come through where it shouldn't. So I wired together the individual bits with some ribbon cable. The MPR121 touchpad uses I2C and also has an interrupt pin that I use to be notified of a key press. And I connect the power in for the LEDs directly to the positive terminal of the battery port, not the 3.3 volt pin because that won't supply enough power. The keypad goes in first and sort of just clicks in place, followed by the LED board, which also just friction fits in place. But I also use some silicon adhesive adhesive to just secure everything in place. It's very easy to remove and reapply if you need to repair something and just make sure everything's secure. The battery clips into the body of the enclosure and adds some nice weight to it. And the fire beetle is screwed down with some tiny little M2 screws to the base. Everything kind of folds up nicely and fits inside. And before we screw the base down, we can just plug in the battery. The base is secured with four M3 screws and the base sits inside the enclosure. The USB-C port of the fire beetle is exposed for battery charging and also reprogramming. So I've got this programmed as a Bluetooth keypad that you can pair and connect to your computer or your phone just like a normal keyboard. I've got it all written up in Arduino and I'm using the Adafruit libraries for the touchpads and also the LEDs and I'm using the BLE keyboard library for the actual Bluetooth keyboard aspect. Specifically I'm using Trident Apollo's fork of this library because the old one doesn't seem to be maintained anymore and this one fixes some of the issues and I'll include a link to this. This library makes it really easy to set up an ESP as a Bluetooth keyboard and you can make all sorts of things. You can set up and send all different key presses and it also has some media interface or playback functionality. So just quickly, the code itself will cause the ESP to boot up when you apply power or it'll wake up from a deep sleep when a key is pressed and quickly connect to whatever device has been paired to previously with a little rainbow display. After a predefined timeout period of 20 seconds, it'll go back into deep sleep to be woken up again when you press any key. I've tried to make it easy so you can modify the colors via the HSV hues for the standby and active LEDs, as well as the mapping from buttons to LEDs and what key press is being sent via Bluetooth. And you just connect this to your computer like any other Bluetooth keyboard. And once you've paired it, it reconnects to your device really quickly as it exits from deep sleep and is really nicely responsive. At the moment, the Y and N keys are just mapped to enter and backspace and the numbers are laid out just like a sort of standard numpad. So I'll add all the 3D files and print profiles to my Maker World page, then I'll include the code and some wiring diagrams in a zip file here too. Let me know if you get a chance to try it out, I'd like to see what people do with this, and let me know if you'd like me to take this further in the future. In any case, that's all I have for you in this video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.